while scrolling through my LinkedIn feed, I've been seeing a lot of really varying opinions on um, in the marketing space about what demand generation is and how it should be approached as a marketer. So how do you define demand generation in your terms? So to me, demand generation is kind of like a strategy. It's not necessarily like a channel or a distribution kind of thing. To me, it's like the, the overarching strategy that or the underlying strategy behind it. So demand generation to me is, well, I guess for clarity, there's demand generation and there's demand capture usually. So demand capture is usually what most people think of with a lot of marketing is Google, Google search ads, lead gen forms. There's demand that already exists out there. So people are aware of a product, they're aware of solutions, they're out there kind of looking for it. So trying to capture that demand that already exists out there, that's demand capture. But for people that don't necessarily know there's a problem or know that there's viable solutions or are super aware of like the pain that this problem like creates for those there's a level of educational content that's needed to make them aware that there is a problem for them to then have this kind of desire to solve it and to me that's uh demand generation but there's also demand generation behind a product or service or a solution and then there's demand generation for like an actual brand so i think even if they know that you know if they know that the problem exists they know their solutions maybe they already have a vendor currently solving that problem supposedly if you can create demand for your brand and your way that you solve that i think i think that's also a way a form of demand generation whereas i think that's what we do with our linkedin ads i don't think we're necessarily there is an element where there's people that a they didn't know that linkedin ads was like this powerful platform that has all these things that could improve the roi of their google ads so i think there's an educational layer that that i seek to add in order to create demand on that on that side but then there's a whole nother group of people that are currently they're sold on the idea of linkedin ads they're actually running linkedin ads they have a vendor but then we can create demand for our style of solution and our brand that then kind of makes them think like hey that's who we need to do ours we're not now we're not happy with what we have we're in the status quo impactable is kind of on the cutting edge we want to go with that so i think in my mind that's the big difference between or that's what demand generation is it also can be confused with like inbound marketing which i don't know i got a lot of hate the other week because i put something like um i was talking about how i create inbound marketing with paid ads and people are you know basically saying that's not possible that's outbound that's not inbound if you're paying for distribution so i think those can inbound marketing and demand generation can kind of be confusing as well yeah i kind of have similar idea of what i've seen in de demand generation where it's almost like the strategy itself is twofold in my mind where the the top layer would be almost like top of funnel activity where you're kind of gathering gathering a curated audience of people who are in like the best position to benefit from your offering that's kind of the way that I word it. Um, and that's typically, like you said, thought leadership. So giving away a lot of free value, ungated value, I should say, um, and not really having expectation, mostly just sharing your expertise and showing that you know things and that you can provide services to kind of help in different areas that people might be struggling with. And then the second fold or the second piece of it was more of that, um, I guess what people call demand capture. So using tactics to kind of encourage conversions, um, things like, like you mentioned, paid ads or retargeting ads, I would say, because so I think this is kind of what you're getting at too. I see the cold layer of advertising as almost part of that like first layer of demand gathering where you're just sharing expertise. Like, yes, you're paying to share this expertise, but yeah. you're not expecting conversions at the cold layer by any means. It's just kind of a yeah. way to start gathering people for retargeting. Yeah, and, and I think so. I'm, I mean, yeah, I don't know what the, so if I had to think about the difference between demand generation and like inbound marketing, because inbound marketing is, in my mind, it's creating a system of marketing where people are coming to you. And it's kind of the same idea of demand gen is that you're not going out and beating down their doors and cold calling them and cold emailing them from like per a personal, you know, or your sales team isn't chasing them. You're doing these things that draw them in. And so, yeah, I guess most people think of that as like so organic social posts, SEO blogs, you know, people are doing their own research, word of mouth. But to me, if I'm doing that with paid ads, like I'm creating this ecosystem where people are learning about us, educating about the problem, we're positioning ourselves as experts, and then they're coming in, like I'm not sending, I don't have any sales team who's going out after them. 
they're coming in booking calls and they have a level of trust built to me. Yeah. That's kind of demand gen mindset to create this inbound flow, but it seems to be yeah, kind of against what people traditionally think of inbound marketing. And they're still trying to figure out what demand gen means half the time. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap there too. I kind of like how you said that you're you're encouraging people to come in and it's not necessarily like, oh, I specify this as inbound marketing. But in my mind, it's almost like we're creating a community of people who would be great prospects for what we offer. And whether or not they convert is semi up to them. You know, we've talked yeah. about like, the timing hurdle that you have to get over where if it's just not the right time for LinkedIn ads, then they're they're not going to convert and there's nothing we can do about that. But just having them in this community and talking to them, engaging with them every day means that like no matter when we overcome that timing hurdle, we're probably going to be the first people they reach out to. Yeah. And I think uh, I talk about this in a lot of like my advertising spiels where it's usually there's like two main reasons that people aren't going to your website and converting. One is timing. And so so, you know, I mean, having a strategy to stay in front of them, like that's really important. But the other big one and the reason that like if they do have a sense of urgency that they're not buying from you yet is that they don't know you, they don't trust you, they don't view you as the experts. So I spend most of my time worrying about that because if I'm doing that and I'm staying in front of them, trying to build my expertise, then I'm staying in front of them. So like staying in front of them just to stay in front of them, I think is pointless. Staying in front of them with the hope of building trust and credibility. So I think, again, yeah, what better way to like curate these targeted communities? But yeah, I guess the idea of doing curating targeted communities with paid ads is kind of ruffling feathers too, because that's not an organic community. It's not, oh, it's not an owned list and it's not like a Facebook group or an email list or, or something like that, I guess. But I mean, you do kind of own the data. You have that targeted list. You can choose to stay in front of them. You can even choose how, what the frequency is, how often you want to stay in front of that group, which with organic methods, you can't, it's kind of up to the algorithm and levels of, act, levels of activity and the luck of the draw. But I think it's why I like paid so much it's because it's more just guaranteed distribution yeah and honestly i feel like we're reaching this time where paid and organic content overlaps in so many different ways like when you're just talking about the way the content is written or the way the content is designed there's a lot of people talking myself included there's a lot of people talking about how paid content shouldn't look so obviously like an ad like people are going to resonate more with something that looks natural in their feed and that's kind of the same line of ideas where um paid Paid strategy, even though it does include a budget and it includes some of these other things that you wouldn't in organic strategies or in organic community building, it is still at the end of the day, in my mind, community building, you're just putting money behind it to ensure that distribution, like you said. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of the in like a lot of the insights I got into how to run paid ads came from running successful organic, like uh, initially my LinkedIn organic was a big lead gen source for us. And then but it's just weird like so again most people their link their organic strategy sucks they just take blog content and they repurpose it and they put it out they don't adjust the formats they don't like put any time or effort into building like a community there with engagement they're just pushing you know they're just pushing stuff out to different platforms and it's like check mark. So actually doing organic correctly in a way that drives actual leads, like that's really tough. So once I kind of figured out what that formula was and building a community is a big part of it. Like it doesn't matter how good the content is that I put out there. If I'm not curating an audience and engaging with the world around me, people aren't going to see it enough. So then I took those concepts and I basically, yeah, when I went to the ad side and like, instead of just saying, okay, well, you know, that worked for organic, but now I need to put a bunch of corporate crap out that because that's what we do with ads. Like, no, I was like, let me just take this exact strategy. In fact, these exact videos and posts. In fact, let me just screenshot this post. Like, and I I baked that into my my paid ad strategy, and you know, it works really well. So I think that's a huge thing. Like, if you have a different, like, if you're not getting any leads from your organic strategy, like that needs work. Um, and if there's some huge difference between your organic strategy and your paid ad strategy, like, there's probably something wrong there as well like it shouldn't be two different worlds shouldn't be stuff that people don't want to engage with yeah and i will say you're touching on this a little bit and that's one of the biggest things i've learned from you but for people who are struggling with their organic strategy actually engaging is such a big factor to it especially on linkedin like even if you're commenting on other people's linkedin posts um it's such a really cool thing about linkedin where your comments become surfaced on people who are following you their like feeds and so if other people who aren't 
aren't following you are seeing that you're adding value in the comments on other people's posts that, you know, becomes a whole new way to bring people to your page. So there's a lot of ways to approach both the organic and the paid content to build that community that we're talking about. Yeah, the engagement, especially for people who have, I mean, for most people, like uh, if you're just getting started, if you have less than a thousand followers, if you have less than, even if you have less than 10,000, like usually, unless you have a soup and let, until you've built a super engaged following of your own, the easiest, fastest, best way for you to get exposure is to make thoughtful comments on other people who have the stage and the spotlight to make comments on their posts. And if you have an insightful po comment that adds, like your comment might get way more profile views and comments and replies than your actual post does. And I still find that true for me. Like I've created, so part of what I do is I try to create these relationships with people um, on different tiers. So there's a there's a handful of people who have way more followers than me. I try to build good relationships with them, but only a, a handful. I, I can't waste all my time engaging with people who are far, very unlikely to engage back. You're you're better finding mutually uh, beneficial relationships. So people on the same level, a couple of levels above, a couple of levels below um, and building those relationships. Because yeah, if I'm, so I, I think I'm pushing like 52,000 followers now. If I'm engaging heavily with someone who has 5,000 followers, they're very appreciative of like my support to them. I create loyal kind of following from them as well. So when I post, they're they're engaging on that. And I do the same with people on my level as well. Like it's um, once you get into it, you realize like it's a very much like quid pro quo kind of thing. Like these people are supporting each other. And if and if they if they leave a comment on five of your posts and you never leave a comment on one of theirs, like they're going to stop engaging on your post. But if you guys constantly engage with each other, um, then you keep that going and then you expand kind of like that group that you're supporting. And that's usually what propels you up uh, in the LinkedIn world. But it can be exhausting because, you know, you have to be smart about it or else you could just be spending too much time kind of engaging. You want to be strategic. Yeah, definitely. So circling back to our conversation about oh. demand gen and that since we got a little bit off topic, what part do you see LinkedIn ads playing in B2B demand generation? So a big thing for me with demand gen is building trust and credibility and positioning yourself as the expert in your space. To me, that's done with educational content um, and kind of of things that make people want to trust you, which is case studies. Yeah, I do think educational content's really good resources. So to me, LinkedIn ads is a way to guarantee distribution of those assets to the your most targeted group, um, because it's not just they visited my website. And so I'm going to show them these things. It's they visited my website, and they fit my client profile. They're from these countries I serve from these five industries that I'm most equipped to help from these companies sizes that have budget for my solution and from these specific position titles or seniority level that have the authority like purchasing authority those people who have shown interest i want to make sure that they see this range of content that paints us in a, in the picture that we want to be painted so to me the demand gen playbook like is most effectively run with paid ads because it's guaranteed distribution the things that you hope to do with organic and that it could take time consuming effort to curate those audiences you can build those with paid ads and you can guarantee distribution without all the manual effort. So to me, that can create an evergreen kind of environment or strategy to to guarantee distribution of your key assets. Um, and one of the things I usually ask like myself is, you know, what are my top assets? If someone leaves my website and they're a good fit, what's my top 10 or 12 things, assets that, you know, if I could really just make sure they saw these, I would know they have a, a good um, picture of us. You know, maybe it's this really key case study of a billion dollar company that we audited. Maybe it's this valuable checklist that, you know, really shows our expertise into the technical side. Maybe it's, you know, whatever else, a handful of things. And then I, that's what I run as ads. Like I guarantee distribution of those assets to people who leave my website. And that's kind of how I, I view creating that demand gen kind of playbook on the paid ad side. I like how you're getting into how organic and paid can really work together in this kind of ecosystem too. Even if you're just talking about LinkedIn only and you have LinkedIn organic and LinkedIn paid, 
And then within LinkedIn paid, you have, you know, cold retargeting and a bunch of different campaign layers that you can have, um, but they all do play together. You know, if somebody sees an ad on or from one of your company pages, they might visit your page and look at some of your organic content. They might visit your website. And so that really does play into that customer journey of, you know, we can guarantee that this certain ad will be their entry point maybe, but at the end of the day, they'll see a bunch of other content. It's important for us to have a variety of those different types of content out there for people to consume. I would definitely agree with that especially the variety but Mm -hmm. i agree and then last question um what made you want to take the demand gen approach with impactable so for me it wasn't like some trendy thing that i just jumped on or pivoted into like when i was getting started i at first like as a marketer i was just trying to replicate what like what other people are doing like i was learning marketing so i was learning what other people are doing i started running linkedin ads and everything i read said you know i should run lead gen forms have some kind of offer and then once they like that was that was the playbook that was everywhere it was run these lead gen forms on facebook and linkedin dangle something in front of them when they bite and you get your their email you either try to personally manually reach out or you draw them into some like long email drip and then from there they should convert like that was what was everywhere and it's still like i think the go-to playbook is get emails work the emails you know get get sales quickly as you know a scrappy startup and a solopreneur probably at the time i found it was a an extreme waste of my time to to chase down these emails who just wanted like they downloaded an ebook or they got a checklist they gave their email up for it and like i couldn't even get them to like respond to to me and i was like personally writing them and then i was like okay well it's obviously a waste of time for me to personally do it maybe i'll try like the email drip and then that's a whole lot of work and um and i didn't have a good strategy behind that as well. And most people's email drip strategy is just persistence. It's just stay in front of them, you know, hit them with deals, try to just be persistent. So I took a different, I started taking a different approach just out of curiosity and kind of just what I, what I've seen work with us personally. And part of it was I had seen inbound leads coming to our website from what I was doing organically on LinkedIn. And, you know, I wasn't dangling an ebook in front of people from my personal profile and then chasing after them. I was putting out content that caused them to come in and book a call like they were coming to me. So, you know, and ultimately that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to do that on the paid ads side at scale. And I kind of stole some of what a lot of my inspiration was e-com marketing. Like I love B2C marketing. I love, I think e-commerce, like, sorry to say B2B marketers. I think, I think B2C marketers are just more mature. They're more sophisticated. They, it's more complex there. They, it takes more skill to construct these marketing ecosystems with less margins and lower price points. Like if you have a $50,000 piece of enterprise software, like I'm sorry, but it takes less marketing skill and finesse to carve out a profitable ROI because you just have like tons of budget to throw at that, whereas e-com doesn't. Uh, so they have to be more slick and more skilled. So I, I stole I stole a lot from e-com. Um, even the way I set up the website, I set it up so that there wasn't a form fill. It was basically I let people just book calls with us and I I put a video demo showing them. Ex- even though we were selling a service, I, I positioned it and marketed it um, and set it up as if it was a product. So they could learn about it on their own. They could book a call without any any form and they could on the website, they could actually go ahead and purchase the service and get uh, an intake form and get started. So they didn't need to talk to a human if they didn't want to. Now, 95% of our people, our prospects did talk to a human before purchasing, but there was actually some that didn't. Some like, I guess our marketing or my profile was so effective. They actually came to the website and just purchased, which blew my mind that that was even a possibility for like a B2B service. But that was part of my inspiration. I wanted to set up like e-com and on e-com, like there's not, there's not sales reps going out and trying to get people to buy like this $50 product, they create marketing, they draw people in, they explain what it is, they have trust factors, you know, they're they're really good at their landing page formula, and then people are purchasing. And so that, that's what I wanted to do with our with our B2B service. I created this marketing and any objection that I thought they could have, I turned it either into assets on the website or ads that I put in front of them. And I tried to answer all the questions, overcome all the objections with my ads. And 
then make the process of booking a call with us and purchasing as frictionless as possible. So that was kind of, I kind of just built, I guess I just did it from scratch from the ground up. Like I, I tried what was popular. It wasn't working for me. So then I just deconstructed. I started at zero and said, okay, if I was a buyer and I kept putting myself in that position, if I was a B2B buyer, like I have some, I don't know, antisocial tendencies. Like I would probably like to be able to go onto the website, see the pricing, watch a demo, buy. Like I get annoyed that I can't buy a $50 a month SaaS tool without jumping on a call with someone. Like that's ridiculous to me. Like, <laughs> and, and if someone wants to buy a $500 a month service without talking to a human, I, it should be possible. Maybe that's not the preferred path, but it should be possible. So that was kind of my inspiration in those areas. Yeah. I, I like what you brought up too, about the lead gen approach kind of being what was trending at the time. And I think because of that, so many people, especially B2B buyers became jaded to that process where like right now, even myself, if I get an email from a sales rep and I've never yeah. talked to this person, I've never heard of this company, it's like immediately deleted. I don't even read it. And so at the end of the day, like so many of us are jaded by that long email sales process of like, once you download an ebook, you just get hit with a ton of different emails from various sales reps that nobody is converting to that anymore. So I love that yeah. idea of almost like taking what your sales reps would say in an email or in a demo call and just putting it on your website, giving it out for free, yeah. like giving it out in ads. And that's what's going to bring people in. I actually have a client who told me in our onboarding call that he has been following you for a couple of months. And he noticed that when he tried to book a call on our website, all of the calls were booked because people are very interested in booking our mm -hmm. services. And he was like, I didn't want to wait a couple of weeks to get on a call. So I just bought the service then. And I was the first person he talked talk to as his account manager. So that was really exciting too. So it does happen still. So that's really nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that, I mean, but what has to happen like for someone to have that level of trust where they're like, I know I already want to buy, like I have some questions because usually when they show up on the call, they're like pretty much sold. They have a handful of questions. They want to make sure it's going to work for them. And they want to like, they have a few details. They're not sure how it works. You know, there's, we can't answer everything, you know, just in our ads and our video, but he was like, this guy was apparently 90% sold, um, but he had a few questions and he was like, you know what? It's not worth waiting. I'll just buy and I'll ask my account manager those questions. That's, that, that's, that's what you want. That's pretty nice. Yeah. That was a really ideal situation. And he's still one of my clients. He hasn't left yet. So one of the good ones. That, yeah. At least he's liking the service so far. And Brian on the sales team, he always jokes that like, I guess that makes it really easy for us too, because we're a LinkedIn ads agency. Our LinkedIn ads is a big part of the, the funnel for us. And it's basically like, they can't show up to the call and like argue that LinkedIn ads isn't effective when that was like one of the big touch points that got them on the call. Like we're obviously the reason you know about us, who we are, what we do, how it works. Like usually it's because of LinkedIn ads. Um, sometimes it's actually more LinkedIn ads than it is my personal profile these days, although I'm trying to fire that back up. But yeah, it's, it's really nice experience for our team as well. When the client is already bought into the process and not coming in with like huge hesitations of how it works, they already know how it works because it worked on them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Cool. Done. That's everything I got.